So today the mission is to change the power steering pump and the water pump. The first thing I'm doing is I'm using a little length of hose to use it like a straw to remove all of the fluid that is in the reservoir for the power steering pump. I'm doing this so I can add clean fluid to the reservoir, turn the car on, and then I'm going to um, turn the wheel all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and try to flush some of the old fluid out of the power steering pump. I took it to Honda, had them diagnose that whine that I was having with the car. They diagnosed, diagnosed it to the power steering pump. Since the car is 140,000 miles and I'm going to be down in here anyways, I figured I'd go ahead and change the water pump as well. So, they said that I should get all the contaminants out of the system first. This is my best idea as to how to do that, is to get all the old dirty fluid out, as much of it as I can, and then replace it with clean fluid flush through the system. I may do that once or twice depending on how dirty it comes out uh, each time before I start trying to remove the old power steering pump. So that's where I'm starting first for this job. Also just a heads up, having a syringe like this is quite a bit faster if you've got one of these handy. If not, doing the hose method that I said works just as well. With this obviously you would just stick it down in like that, pull the plunger, to get whatever fluid you can out and then dispose of it properly. So I've got all the fluid out at this point. The next step is to add clean fluid to it, turn the car on, turn the wheel all the way left, all the way to the right, all the way left, all the way to the right. Do that a couple times to cycle that new fluid through the power steering system and then drain it again. Okay, I flushed this thing out about four or five times. I've gone through, let's see, about two and a half bottles of fluid takes about a half a bottle of fluid to fill that reservoir. Um, it looks significantly cleaner and smells a whole lot better than it did when I started. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put the car up on the jack, put it on a jack stand, get the wheel off, and see if I can gain access up into that um, the uh, power steering pump. Another thing you want to do is remove the serpentine belt before you jack the car up. It's a lot easier to do when it's on the ground because it's not as high in the air. I've got another video on how to do that. I'll add the link probably right here on how to remove that belt. Uh, using regular tools, by the way, without buying this special tool. Um, the tool's only $15, but it doesn't come with a 19 millimeter wrench, which is what you need. So that's the only reason why I didn't buy it. Um, it doesn't have the size I need. Otherwise, I would have probably bought that. It's kind of difficult to get those two wrenches up in there, but I do have a video on that. I'll put the link right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the car in the air and start seeing if I can get to this power steering pump. So you've got the car in the air, you've got a light in place, support it on a jack stand. The reason you want to support it on a jack stand, if you're going to do the water pump anyways, you're going to need to take off the motor mount that's on the left side over here so you can drop the engine down and get to that uh, tensioner bolt. Now what I'm doing here is I'm also removing this plastic, this plastic liner in here so that I can have more access into that area. This is a pretty tight area to work in, so getting any extra access you can get is going to help you. And you're gonna thank me for telling you to do that later, trust me. Um, I've already attempted to remove that belt tensioner bolt one time using a wrench and I could not. It was just on there super tight. So this time, I'm gonna to attempt to gain access to it. I think if I drop the motor down, just a little bit, I can access it just barely right here because this wall ends right here and then comes to an L right there. I can just barely get an extension in that way and I'm going to hit that junk with the impact wrench try to get it out. I've actually already bought a new bolt at Honda. They're only like $3.50 for that tensioner bolt so that, um, you know, if I happen to break it, I've got another on hand. I don't have to try to, you know, go wrangle one up or anything like that. So, anyways, I'm going to do the power steering pump first. That's the bugger you're trying to get at. It's not too terribly difficult to get up in there. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but not too bad at all. The real challenge is going to come in when I try to get... Where's that bolt at? Eh, well, that's the pulley. That, that bolt I'm referring to is somewhere up in there. You can't see it right now. But like I said, I'm going to drop the motor down in a little bit to gain access to that. I'll probably just make two different videos, one for the water pump and one for the power steering pump. But 
I wanted to show you both since I'm in here and you can kind of see both of them. So at this point, like I said, I'm just going to try to peel back some of this plastic a little bit, get it out of the way, and then start attacking this right over here. I will start by removing the bolts. Um, I'll identify where they're all at in a minute, but there's one there. There's probably at least one or two on the top. And I'm going to remove all those first and uh, then disconnect the lines because once you disconnect the lines, there's going to be power steering fluid all over the place and it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. So I'm going to remove it, dismount it from the engine first, then deal with the lines. So I'll show you where those bolts are located in just a moment. Okay, so this is actually the new unit. Uh, I grabbed this just so I can show you that there are actually two mounting holes for this power steering pump. One on the bottom, one on the top, and I can tell that because of this little feature right here. You can see that feature right there on the one that's in the car. So you've got the bolt on the bottom and there's going to be another one on the top. So I'm going to remove those two bolts and then it looks like this is when it's handy to have this laying around. Looks like the two lines that are going to go in on this thing are going to be here and here. So after you remove those two bolts, you're going to have to remove the four bolts that hold those in. And then at that point, you should be able to pull it out of the car. Just a heads up to remove those two bolts on the bottom and on the top. Those are 12 millimeter. Okay, people, quick tip. I was actually having a lot of trouble getting to that upper bolt for the power steering pump. But as you can see, I've just removed the pulley. You actually do not need a puller to get that pulley off. What you need to do is remove this bolt. So actually the way I did it was I took a 19 millimeter wrench, stuck it up in there, got it in position, used this to put through the pulley to keep it from spinning. And then just like when I removed the um, serpentine belt, I looped these two together like so to create more leverage to loosen that bolt. Now that thing's on there pretty good. But once you combine those two wrenches together that way, um, you actually get a pretty good bit of leverage. I did this so I could access that upper bolt because um, I couldn't use the long, the deep socket, because it was too long. It was hitting that side of the uh, fender wall there. And this one was too short. The pulley was in the way. So, naturally, I had to get the pulley out of the way so I can get this wrench on there, loosen that upper bolt, and uh, get that old pump out of there. So... I've got everything loosened except that top bolt and the top bolt that holds the lower, there's two bolts on this. I think there's only one bolt here just on the bottom. So I've loosened that bolt, I've loosened this bolt, I still need to loosen this one. That's a, Those are all 10 millimeters there. Um, I'll loosen that one after I remove the upper bolt for the power steering pump. Loosen that, disconnect the things, make sure I get the old O-rings off. This came with new O-rings. Very important to change that out because you don't want to start leaking on you later. So you've got the two O-rings, they're different sizes obviously, one smaller, one larger. You put the smaller one in the smaller hole and the larger one in the large hole, obviously. So I'll show you how to connect those onto the hoses in a few moments after I get this thing out. Alright guys, so after removing that upper bolt, gaining access to that, what I've done here, I'm trying to get a little light in there for you so you can see what's going on. Aha! There we go, that's better. So, what I've done as I kind of grab the power steering pump, sorry for the shaky video by the way, I grabbed the power steering pump and kind of tucked it back behind the mounting brackets so I could gain better access to uh, the bolts here to remove these two hoses. Just wanted to give you that little uh, tip and trick that I was using with that. So that's the deal with that, I'm just removing those three bolts that I was talking about before and I'm going to get this power steering pump out of here. I'm also going to place a uh, drop pan underneath here because I suspect and probably rightfully so that when I disconnect those hoses, power steering fluid is just going to flow out all over the place and make a big mess. So I'm going to put a catch pan underneath there just to uh, catch some of that stuff that's happening. And actually, I think it's already starting to drift. You can see right there. So yeah, put a catch pan down. Don't make a huge mess on your garage floor because you might be laying in it later. <laughs> all right, so just as I suspected, as soon as uh, that power steering pump came loose, Power steering fluid just came out and got everywhere. I don't know if you can see it, just it's just wet everything over here. There's some crap on my lens. Yeah, that sort of helped. Okay. Just power steering fluid all over the place. You can see my catch pan caught a lot of it. You can see it's still dripping there. Um, so, 
The next item of business is to locate your O-rings. One of the O-rings is there. There's not one there. Sorry, that was probably blurry. But there is one still stuck to that hose there. So, what you want to do is take your small O-ring, put it on the small connection, your large O-ring, put it on the large connection. And uh, maybe take a bit of the power steering fluid to lubricate that a little bit, even though I don't think that's going to be a problem because it looks like there's plenty there. So replace your O-rings. Once your O-rings are replaced, take your new unit and stick it up in there, reconnect those two hoses, and then um, start reconnecting the two mounting bolts. And that's basically it. After that, you would just have to put your, uh, your guard back in place here and uh, reconnect your belt, your serpentine belt. And then obviously you need to refill your, uh, refill your power steering reservoir with uh, power steering fluid. And I am actually going to flush it a couple more times with the new pump in place just to be certain that I've got everything, um, all the old contaminants out of the system. I don't want to destroy the new pump um, with that system. Oh, you have to reconnect your pulley as well. Uh, now, I couldn't get the pulley out of there. Let me talk about this for a second. I could not get the pulley out of the way. It was just kind of hanging on the power steering pump until I got that top bolt out. So before I put the bolt back in, I'm going to do the same thing, just kind of hang it there, put the bolt back in place, and then re-bolt this back on the new pump and put my lower bolt back on. That's going to be the process that I do that. So just a little trick there. Be cognizant of that, okay? Other Okay, so I've determined that this is the only way to get this freaking O-ring to seat in there properly. Make sure you place it right there on the uh, plastic housing here. Lubricate it with new oil, new power steering fluid, and then take and gently press it into position while rotating. And you'll feel it kind of pop into place and just turn it a few times like that to make sure it's not bound up anywhere, make sure it's not getting pinched. And then reinstall your... Yeah, that was thunder. That's awesome. Reinstall your bolt here and get that uh, to the proper torque before reinserting this back into the um, car. Now the reason why I'm doing it like this is because I've had a hell of a time with this seal leaking. And... Uh, I just actually swapped this unit back out because I was afraid that the uh, unit that I had was defective because I couldn't get it to stop leaking. Um, it came with a new set of O-rings. I've gone through probably about seven or eight O-rings trying to get this sealed, so hopefully this time that is it. Uh, I will let you know.